Hey everyone, I'm Willow. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be trying out this Hanamule Expressions watercolor paper for the very first time. I have been doing a lot of big projects lately, so now I just want to let loose, go ham, and see what I can throw at this paper and how it's going to handle it. I have had this Hanamule watercolor paper on my Amazon wish list for at least two years. And finally, when I launched my YouTube channel, I decided it was time to treat myself. The first thing I notice about this paper is the texture. The only other 100% cotton cold press paper I have to compare it to is Arches, which has a very rough, almost sandpapery surface. They have another kind of paper called Rough, um, but just their regular cold press paper is too textured for my personal liking. In comparison, this Hanamule Expressions paper has a much flatter texture with a fairly soft tooth to it. Not as rough as Arches, but also not as smooth as a hot press paper like this Meaden one. But kind of a happy medium, which I like. Enough texture that it has that watercolor character to it, but not enough to interfere with whatever medium I want to throw at it. Which today is probably going to be all of them. <laughs> The watercolors I'm using are just an inexpensive pan set that I got off of Amazon. I actually had to look them up for this video because all they say on them is pretty excellent. So they must be good, right? You can tell I've gotten a lot of use out of them and they've served me really well. I'm pretty sure the paper makes a bigger difference than your paints when it comes to watercolor. If you think about it, paper generally doesn't take very well to getting wet. It just sort of disintegrates. So watercolor paper is actually pretty special, and I will have a link in the description to all the supplies I'm using if you want to check them out. Those are going to be Amazon affiliate links, and that just means that if you use one, it helps support this channel. Normally I would do my sketch on a separate sheet of paper and then transfer the drawing onto my watercolor paper. But since this is just a test, I decided to skip that whole step and just go right in with a pencil. All right, so once I have my sketch, I'm just going to apply a clean wash of water and then start dropping in my color wet on wet. This is a technique that has always inspired me when I see other artists doing it, but it almost never works out for me. So we'll see how it goes this time. This particular pad of paper is in a block, which basically just means it's a stack of paper that is glued all around the sides. The benefit of that is your paper doesn't tend to warp or buckle as much, and you don't have to tape it down. But I did decide to add a border of masking tape anyway, because when chaos breaks loose, I feel like that clean white border can just visually contain it, if that makes sense. <laughs> Plus, I want to see if the tape sticks well to the paper, if the paint gets underneath, and if it tears when I try to peel it up later. I ended up adding a few layers of paint to get the color as saturated as I wanted, and I did dry the paper really thoroughly in between each layer with a blow dryer. Once the wet on wet layers were 100% dry, I went in with some masking fluid just to mask off the edges of the hair. I was inspired by Jane Beata. She uses this masking fluid technique for a really cool negative space effect. And she just did a video all about how to use masking fluid, so I will leave a link to that in the description. All right, so I've decided to go back in with the pencil and kind of redefine the face. I wasn't super happy with it to begin with, and I kind of lost track of the sketch with all of the watercolor that I put down here. So just gonna map that out again and maybe lightly erase it before I go in with the next layer. Drawing faces in profile is definitely my weak point. It's, um, I don't know what's so difficult about it. You would think that only having to draw one side of the face would make it easier because you don't have to match all the proportions, but it's almost like there's a whole nother set of proportions that you have to learn. Like how far is the eye from the bridge of the nose? And you know, where does the nostril land on the side of the face in relation to that or the, or the corner of the mouth? And all of these things I just have not quite wrapped my head around yet. Watercolor Sin using a regular eraser. 
I don't know, I can't trust my kneaded eraser right now. It needs to be cleaned and it's kind of smudging the graphite around on the page. I don't like that. Um, feels feels like a betrayal, to be honest. So. When I sat down to film this, I had no idea what to draw, so I actually started sketching off camera in my sketchbook, mainly because I wanted to loosen up and figure out what I was going to paint, but also because my last two videos went so much better than I expected, and all of a sudden when I sat down to film this one, I was struck by this fear that whatever I make won't be good enough. I am super inspired by artists like Maggie from Creating Cute Art or Becky from Becky Traeger Art for the way they dive into their creativity so fearlessly. So I tried to channel some of their courage and jump into this piece before I had too much time to overthink it. So all that is to say that I did make a sketchier version of this in my sketchbook, and luckily I did decide to film a bit of it for Instagram. And I hope someday that I will be comfortable enough to show you more of my process in these videos. But in the meantime, I am doing my best to share more of my sketching phase over on Instagram. You can follow me at Willow Rose Arlen if you want to check that out. If you ever use like a dry brush effect in your artworks, the way it looks across the subtle texture of this paper, I really enjoy. Painting darker skin tones with watercolor is another thing I really want to get better at. Skin has this amazing luminance to it, and watercolor is perfect at capturing that because of how transparent it is and how it allows you to see the light of the paper through the paint. But it's a double-edged sword because trying to add darkness and contrast means you can quickly cover up too much of that paper and make things look kind of muddy and lifeless. So I wanted to explore using layers of paint and see what effect I could get. So now I'm breaking out my gouache. I said I was gonna have a dabble and throw whatever I had at this, so that's what we're gonna do. Okay, I was kind of sad to cover up this beautiful paper, but I'm pretty happy I decided to go with a dark background because it makes her skin look so much glowier. She was looking a little bit dull on that white background if you ask me. I also used the gouache to soften the highlights on her face a bit and to bring the whole galaxy effect together.
When it came to removing the masking fluid, I did struggle a bit at first, but I think that was because it was still a little bit warm from the blow dryer. Which, I know it's not recommended to use a blow dryer with masking fluid, but once I had let it cool down completely, it actually started to remove just fine. I am super impressed. I think this might be the best experience I have had with masking fluid, and the paper held up great too. It didn't tear at all, even though I was scrubbing at it really hard, and none of the paint got underneath. I decided the piece looked a bit unfinished at this stage, and I really wanted to try more things on this paper. So next I grabbed the first brush pen I could find and started to add line art to the whole piece. I really loved how well the brush pen went down. Sometimes watercolor paper can kind of drink up a pen or a marker and make it feel super dry, and that did not happen with this. Then I picked out a handful of colored pencils, and oh my goodness, the texture that these made on this paper. Once again, it all comes down to that texture. Not too rough, not too smooth. I know there are a lot of papers out there with a texture like this, so I probably shouldn't give it too much credit, but I was definitely having fun at this point. And finally, I went in with this Deleter white ink for a really thick white border. Why not just a white gel pen, you ask? I don't know, I guess I just had my heart set on this chunky boy. Alright, so I'm almost finished and I'm really impressed with how this paper handled everything I threw at it today. Sketching, erasing, layer after layer of paint, masking fluid, tape, gouache, brush pens, colored pencils. I had a lot of fun and I'm honestly really excited to use this paper more in the future. Let me know if you've tried this paper before or if you have a favorite watercolor paper in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye! Was knocked down, heard the countdown through the haze in the face of defeat. Yeah, I was ruled out with no bail out on my own, all alone, left to bleed out. But I rose up from the ground just like I was spell bound. All the odds were against me, so I picked up the Click here to check out my last video where I painted a cartoon self-portrait in gouache.